Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com. For premium picks, DwyerSportsBetting.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News, and other sports. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. The Green Bay Packers. Should you buy or sell? In a word, I think you should buy. This team, quite frankly, is better than advertised. Right now, to win the NFC North, the casinos are offering you a minus 167 on the Green Bay Packers. I think that's a bet worth considering. Let's talk about it. Think about that NFC North for a moment, right? The Chicago Bears have a new head coach who supposedly is going to bring in more of a passing attack. In my opinion, that level of uncertainty should make you skeptical about the Bears' efforts to leapfrog the Green Bay Packers this year. The Minnesota Vikings are quarterbacked by Christian Ponder. By itself, that should raise question marks. If you want to see a group that has regressed after a big year, just look at the record of running backs after they've rushed for 2,000 yards. I'm expecting some fall off from Adrian Peterson. I think the Green Bay Packers, assuming Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, should handily have a better record than the Minnesota Vikings. Let's also talk about the Detroit Lions. It's very rare that a team goes from being major disappointment to putting out an A-plus effort the very next year. Also, if you look at the Lions, they're retooling several parts of their team. The lack of continuity, in my opinion. Also, the problem Matthew Stafford had last season in throwing touchdowns needs to be addressed before we can consider the Lions to be a serious contender to leapfrog the Green Bay Packers. Right Now let's talk about the Packers. In my opinion, the Packers have the best quarterback in the National Football League. Aaron Rodgers, right? Understand Aaron Rodgers, quite frankly, was a great quarterback at Cal Berkeley. He's been a great quarterback <coughs> in the pros. <coughs> Understand that Green Bay has had one of the elite offenses in the National Football League now for several years. In terms of coaching, you're not going to get better than this team. An argument can be made that the premier defensive coordinator in this league is Dom Capers. With all due respect to Dick LeBeau, understand at a minimum, Dom Capers is on the short list. Nobody in the NFL <laughs> had blitzes where they blitzed five or more guys more than the Green Bay Packers did last year. It's a very aggressive defensive scheme. And understand, offenses were so unprepared for it that the offenses that faced that Green Bay defense cumulatively led the league in penalties, right? Let me also point out, too, that the Green Bay Packers have upgraded at key positions, notably running back, right? Eddie Lacy might be a superstar, right? They also drafted Jonathan Banks. If you're a Pack 12 fan, you know who he is. He's the back from UCLA last year. Now, that, that those two should be a huge upgrade over Alex Green. You want to watch what happens in the preseason in Green Bay, right? But just remember the name, Eddie Lacy, right? Let me also point out, too, that Last year, the Green Bay Packers suffered a huge amount of injuries on both sides of the ball, right? They were among the league leaders 
in games lost to injury. If they simply regress to the mean, if they simply have, let's say, the average number of injuries, the team should greatly improve. Understand, even with all of the injuries last year, the Packers were 11 and 5. They were snake bitten last year, injury wise, and yet they were still 11 and 5. Right? So, this is a team, quite frankly, that if they're healthy and ready, should win, in my opinion, at least 10 games this season. Now, what are the negatives with this team? And there are a few. Like college coach Urban Meyer, I'm a guy who really believes in locker room leadership. You need some guys on your team who, quite frankly, other guys are going to follow, right? Even when those guys are hurt, they set the tone for the locker room culture in which guys show up and understand what's expected of them. Now, you had two iconic guys on the Packers last year who are no longer with them. Future Hall of Famer Charles Woodson and wide receiver Donald Driver. Right? These guys were Packers for several years. These guys literally exemplified the kind of commitment that has made the Packers a serious player in recent years. The locker room is going to be without both of those guys. Also, there's uncertainty on the offensive line. It's not that Jeff Saturday, who came over from the Colts, was that great a center. But understand that he's no longer with the team. They're going to have to replace him at center. There's going to be musical cheers on that offensive line. Also, the Packer defense had problems. Let's be charitable. They had problems dealing with the read option offense, right? Colin Kaepernick would still be running and gaining all kind of yards against this Packer defense if, if games were longer than four quarters, right? They had no clue how to stop him. The idea of dealing with a mobile quarterback completely baffled them. That's something that you need to look at. Also, from a fantasy perspective, while Aaron Rodgers is certainly an A-plus fantasy candidate, right? He's a Packer you need to think about early in the draft. Understand, though, that the Packers had no 1,000-yard wide receivers last year. In other words, in terms of A-plus fantasy talents, the Packers really only have one. So if you're a fantasy football person, you need to think about that on draft day. Their rushing game was weak last year. Um, Eddie Lacy, Jonathan Banks... These guys are going to be rookies this year. You don't want to pick them where you would pick an Adrian Peterson or an Arian Foster, right? And, of course, as good as guys like Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb are, they didn't get 1,000 yards. And um, it's hard to pick a guy who didn't get 1,000 yards in the Andre Johnson, Calvin Johnson part of the draft. So just be aware of that. With everything said... I view the Green Bay Packers as a buy. I like a couple of plays. I like them to win the NFC North. I also think you're getting generous odds, the kind of hot odds that you can hedge at the beginning of the playoffs to lock in at least a break even on the Green Bay Packers to win the NFC. You're getting 10 to 1 odds. San Francisco is actually ranked ahead of Green Bay by Vegas, right? I like those 10 to 1 odds. They look tempting to me, but understand I'm a hedge better. In other words, I would bet 10 to 1, and then, of course, when you get to the playoffs, I would be betting against Green Bay just to hedge the play somewhat in the hopes that Green Bay delivers on the play and that I'm able to collect. But I'm willing to give away some of the 10 to 1 leverage during the playoffs just to make sure that I don't lose any money. Anyway, I like Green Bay. I think 
they are a buy. Quite frankly, I think they're a more attractive buy than teams right now that are projected to have higher win totals by Vegas in the NFL, like the Denver Broncos. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and let me make a big point here. Right now it's August the 4th, 2013. You need to understand that injuries are part of the game. Right? These projections are made in the hope, and that's all it is, that Aaron Rodgers plays the full season. I believe Aaron Rodgers is the most valuable Packer. Right? If Aaron Rodgers gets knocked out week one, as has happened to elite quarterbacks like Tom Brady and Randall Cunningham back in the day, then all bets are off. Then you need to start to hedge your play to cover your position. Thanks for stopping by.